coffee is very important. Week one, done. <laughs> Welcome to Resty Studio. So yeah, week one ish is actually done in the first week of the again the HQ testing training, which personally I am tired, my brain hurts, and I'm running with some issues on my project, which is not actually no, it's very normal in in our case in, in the development field. So I'm not like oh my god, it's not the end of the world. No. I have seen worst issues around programming and stuff. So, how do I recap the first week of intensive training? So, first off, I need to actually find a good explanation about what the intensive training is. Like I said before in the other video, the intensive training is an eight-week intensive program provided by Gendev HQ, and that allows you to become a software engineer at the end of week eight using unity as your starting point during the weeks provided they're gonna give you tasks on the project that you're working on and then for each week you're gonna have a group call with the instructor and he's gonna see your code and then he's gonna tell you some tips in how to improve and how to optimize your code and the reason it's intensive is because um, you're, they're not giving you the solution to actually approach this project. You need to actually find it yourself. You are a software engineer. You need to learn how to research a solution. You need to actually be a master also at Google search. How this training comes and goes? Now, in this training, the intensive training, you're actually building your own tower defense system. Personally, I hate tower defense system games. I don't know why, but I hate them. For me, th this is how the intestines training start with this type of game. So I'm gonna try to make it my own. So they're gonna give you the first tax for week one, which was make the basic um, AI behavior of the enemy and use the spawn manager. Now, basically you have can have everything running, but they tells you what you need to apply in the projects. So for example, this is actually the main task for week one, which you need to have the AI system, but you need to actually use a NavBase component or a NavBase agent component in which the enemy will walk in the big path. Okay, these two, the big NavBase floor and, and the AI um, big path, I took me roughly like three hours. I never worked with the NavBase, nav mesh big thingy before so it took me a while to make it running but I did it now in, in, before jumping to the spawn manager the AI system you will say oh that's very easy that's very basic I will add it up no why because if you had the C sharp survival guide you can actually find it on Unity uh, it teaches it teaches you how to use also um, classes for it now, even though you can put that this everything up in one class, in one script, you have the liberty to actually apply a more modular and a more smart way to approach this. In my case, what I did was that I put the basic AI in a class and I make another script, which depending on the type of enemy, which it will inherit the AI behavior. That, that, that is how the way I approach it. I will, I will let you guys to see it now. In the spawn manager, this took me roughly like two days. I'm not kidding you. Now, the first three, five points in the spawn manager, done. Matter of minutes. Once I read about the object pulling the waste system, recycle the enemy sanking environment, tidy slash clean, that's when my mind went blank. Literally. Blank, 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 blank. I took two naps of half an hour in order to make this work. I will tell you why. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but sometimes in development, when you're trying to find a solution, it's normal to get stuck. So there's nothing wrong to admit it. And a real developer gets blank. So how did I approach this? Now, for the first um, task about the enemy AI, where am I? <gasps> excuse me, excuse me. Here you go. Hey, I'm back. Now, for the approach for the enemy AI, I have a basic a enemy AI script in which it has the navbase component, has basic speed, health, and war funds um, properties, and then I have uh, the in the start method. I have that once you're spawned, they just walk through the destination 
and that's done. The reason it looks like this is because I have another script called Tolmec. I have two types of enemy. So he will inherit from the enemy AI. And I did it this way because if in the future I will add more enemy, it's actually more easier just to make a script describing the enemy inherit from the enemy AI, which already has the health benefits and the nav bitch benefit. And that's it. I don't have to write down the enemy AI multiple times. I just inherit those basic components and that, that is how I approach week one the enemy. Now for the spawn manager. Yeah, it took me a while. In the spawning manager, they tell you about object pulling. Object pulling is a game pattern in which in instead of actually creating and destroying enemies that which create junk memory on your game. and it, for the best optimized way to actually use that concept is to make a pre-created list of game objects and use those and use that list and just look through them and then you're using the same thing and you're not wasting memory how can you do it in code simple you make a list of your enemy and then you return it and then the spawn manager would use this list the enemy spawn list and it's gonna spawn it in the game scene now in order to tackle how to make your game scene tidy is that instead that you're pulling sets on spawn like crazy in the hierarchy the best approach to putting inside an uh, empty game object let me show you fast so if you see here i'm gonna turn this on here on my manager spawn manager i created three max from the list and i have an enemy space container that has the three so instead of being on the hierarchy like crazy it's all tidy and clean so see now during the coach call they were giving us some tests in how can we approach this and the best way you can manage this is that if you have everything related for an action it's supposed to be separated on your own script meaning that if i have spawn manager and i'm using a pooling manager then they're supposed to be separated now because why it needs to be separated because we're trying to make clean code from the start now given those tips my script supposed to look like this see how clean it is i only have in this script on this spawn manager script i only have 50 58 lines of code which is cute and the pool manager supposed to look like this only 63 lines of code very beautifully not scary enough why does my spawn manager looks like a spaghetti code because I have issues with Unity. I don't know why. Once I, cre uh, once I created the pulling system and made the communication with them using a singleton, it was working fine, but once I turned off Unity and turned off my computer and booted up the next day, somehow the spawn manager loses communications with the pool manager. So in order to have everything ready for week one and make the spawning done, I have to put my pulling manager inside the spawn manager, which is not the way they're giving us tips about it we're supposed to actually separate each action but in my case this is how i fix it now they gave us a few pointers to look out for in which we need to start use um think and start using scriptable objects and start using dictionaries in order to spawn the enemy so i need to actually uh, incorporate that in my code um during today in which to be ready for week two in which we will be using Delegates, events, dictionaries, scripts of objects, um, lampara form, in which instead of using the four loops like this, we're gonna have a single line for the four. So that is one of the tips we were given to us. This is something that I need to actually fix right now before entering week two and see if by updating my Unity version, this is actually can be approachable. So that is exactly the recap on trying to see how can I make this recap um, not overwhelmed but just giving you my experience in intensive training in which how the coding process is done since it's the week one maybe I will have my ups and downs explaining stuff once we're week two and three I may have a solid idea how to show you my experience with this training I don't want you guys to be scared of but it's actually very nice training if you want to actually 
improve yourself that is why the reason even though you have experience in coding either being a developer in other areas in unity developer and you know, being a unity developer taking this instance in training allows you to see other concepts with different points of view that is why in a way even though i am accustomed and have experience as a developer sometimes i get blank moments because it's like how to approach this because I have never done it from from the starting point I usually do sp sp spaghetti codes when I'm doing personal projects like the ones from the my Genshi series but this obligates you to start thinking cleanly from the start point so personally at first yes I am tired I am drained and even though it is Sunday the moment I do this week one is almost done and I need to actually fix some stuff before going to week two which we will we'll be no longer using gate components or something like that we'll be actually using delegates and events to make my so yeah technically yes i am drained and i'm tired but my goal is to make it mobile friendly and try to make it a ar game so whew, let's see how it goes this is actually week one recap and then i'm going to sit down and write everything up in a blog post on my other accounts and then try to do it the other way around yeah it's not it's not it's it's very not easy to do, to do this but yeah so this is recap of week one of the interesting training provided by again the hq next will be week two but let me see how can i first this recast very differently like always thank you for hearing me out until the next one have a lovely day